Hello, I'm John Shepherd, and in this short video, we're going to take a look at the type of training that I'm doing with the athletes I coach at the beginning of the indoor season and the transition through to the peak part of the indoor season. I'll be providing an overview of the workouts we do, which will hopefully give you some ideas to create your own. This part of the training year is vital as you need to set yourself up not only for a good indoor season but also for a great outdoor season so volume and intensity needs to match what you need to do currently for the indoors and also stand you in good stead for the outdoor season. In this respect the model of training planning you use is crucial. I use what's known as undulating periodization whereby all the ingredients of the training mix are rotated on a consecutive basis so you don't really go through periods of building up strength, speed and power as with traditional models of periodization. rather all the ingredients are mixed together into a training week or a training phase but there are different emphases throughout these phases. Basically this means for example that we're always working on the technical aspects of jumping from the day we start training it's just that we do more of it as the season approaches. Traditional methods of training planning would have bigger build-up phases where the athlete would develop strength as an emphasis before moving on to speed for example. But with undulating periodization or block periodization, as I've mentioned, all the ingredients are placed into the training mix. So at the moment we're working a lot on long approach runs to develop the ability to take off out of speed. And this is something that we do for at least twice a week, three to four weeks before the start of the indoor season. But bear in mind that we will have been jumping at least once a week prior to that and focusing on lots of takeoff drills, for example, again once or twice a week as parts of other sessions. You want to come into the indoor season being able to take off comfortably out of speed. You don't want to be finding your way throughout the season. Rather, you want to start with your first competition being confident enough that you're going to be able to handle the speed needed to take off and jump well enough. So, we're working off run-ups of 12, 13, 14, 15 strides for athletes whose run-ups are 18, 19 or 20. Of course, we keep the volume of drills that we do going as well during this period of time. So, we're working a lot on speeding them up though. So we're doing lots of skipping drills, hopping drills and takeoff drills and our sprint drills become much faster. In this session unit we did lots of skips so we went vertical and we went forwards as quick as possible and we even had skipping races to really work on the speed aspect. Adding more plyometric exercises which focus on vertical displacement has been a new addition to my training this year, or a new emphasis I should say. Here you can see one of the skipping races which we did recently and it forces the athletes to move as quickly as they can, thus sharpening them up again optimally for the indoor season. In the same session we also worked on sprint posture and went through a series of drills using the bars as you've seen before in previous videos and again towards the end of this particular unit we held races with them so the guys again had to move as quickly as they could holding the bar overhead. Within reason I'll always be encouraging the athletes to perform the drills they're doing at the beginning of the indoor season or throughout the transition into the indoor season as dynamically as possible. So the emphasis of these scissor bounds was on a low lift of the foot and a very fast strike of the track. We'll do each of the drills two to three times each over 20 to 30 meters and there'll be six to seven combinations of each in a drills unit. There'll be round about four or five units of drills in a session and a unit could also include technical work. A session will last about an hour and a half to two hours. Consequentially, we're also building a lot of volume or maintaining volume, training volume throughout the period as well. So we're not going to come out of the indoor season unfit and needing to really build up again. 
Another thing I try to do sometimes is invoke what's known as potentiation. So we'll do these drills, for example, with the bars, do them as races, as you're seeing here, and then to culminate the end of the session, we will do them without bars. So hopefully there will be a potentiating effect of the bar work onto actual sprints and the athletes will run faster. And of course, we always continue our plyometric and eccentric jump work. Yes, I may reduce some of the volumes of these as the indoor season gets into full swing, but it's important to maintain that ability and to try to up the intensity of the plyometrics also at this time to increase the power output of the athletes. Hopping from a raised platform is obviously difficult, but we will progress this and use a run on so it becomes even more dynamic. As well as the box work from a run-on, we've also been doing bounds from a run-up and measuring the distances achieved. So here we're doing four bounds and a jump into the pit and we're looking for better results than we did in previous years and in previous months. And of course it's also important to keep your weight training going. Now we still emphasise our triphasic methodology, so isometric, eccentric and concentric exercises. We will however reduce the intensity slightly, although having said that, the objective may be in some sessions to lift as heavy a weight as possible over a couple of repetitions. So the volume will reduce, but the intensity, although in small doses, may actually increase. Regular viewers of the channel will know that I recently adjusted my attitude to weight training over the last year or so and if you want to find out more check out the video on coaches resolutions but suffice to say that certain athletes are doing more concentric training at the moment. Returning to the theme of this video it's important to continue to weight train throughout the indoor season so that you carry over the strength and can improve upon it for the outdoor season. You don't want to reduce volume and intensity too much in order to maintain the momentum that you've gained throughout the indoor season and before. To put into context what I've just said, basically we're still doing the same weight training throughout the indoor season as we were doing before. So it'll be two to two and a half sessions a week of specific weight training, emphasizing the exercises that you're seeing on screen at the moment, more or less. Although not shown, we're also doing a lot more runs timed with the free lap system in order to really get the guys running as fast as they can and also so that I know really how fast they are running. And of course, speed work, sprint work, also includes lots of run-up work, so working on the various phases of the run-up as well as completing full run-ups with and without a takeoff. Given a choice, I'd always prefer to do run-up work as opposed to out-and-out -out sprint work, although of course the latter is also important. You saw quite a lot of the various group members doing technique work at the beginning of this video. In order to speed up the transition and the ability to take off for the indoor season, we do a lot of these drills using a mat on the penultimate step as you're seeing at the moment on screen. This overloads the takeoff. We also use these drills where there are two mats placed which work on the penultimate step placement. So you have a mat on the third step out and on the takeoff. And this creates a necessary fast rhythm in order to take off correctly. The idea is to run through the mats as if they are not there, making minimal adjustments. So for example, there's hardly any hip drop on the penultimate step, and the foot placement is made flat. Basically, you're learning to set up the takeoff. Hopefully, this overview of what we're doing at the moment in training, in terms of getting ready for the indoor season, will help you and your training. Some of the younger group members have done a preliminary or an early season competition, and although they didn't get the distances they were potentially looking for, I could see that there was a lot of potential, and after a few more competitions, I'm sure they'll get the distances that they were looking for. 
Obviously with the first competition there can be a lot of timing issues and of course the adrenaline and motivation are different to training. So as usual, good luck with your training and competitions and do leave any comments or questions you may have in the section below or through my other social media.